Hello, it's Jimmy here at Orleys. So, might have a bit of a simple one here today. Just want a diagnostic check on this, but we'll see what what it brings. Um, but yeah, it's got an interesting story behind it, so I thought I'd still make a video. Um, he had a block DPF, and he took it to a mechanic who'd done a forced regen, um, and then the car started smoking everywhere. Um, not from the exhaust itself, but like from underneath the car, it was smoking. Um, they cut off the the regen, uh, but it was too late. Uh, the DPF was damaged. Um, so he's then had to go and get a replacement DPF fitted on the vehicle. Um, the mechanics fitted the replacement DPF, um, but he said he doesn't want to do anything else to the car, so basically take it to someone who knows more about it. Um, now, he's got a replacement DPF in there, but he doesn't know the cause of why it got blocked in the first place, and of course his original mechanic has give up. He doesn't want to touch it anymore because of what happened last time. Um, and it just goes to show the the risks involved in doing uh, forced regenerations, um, especially on these Vauxhall vehicles. They just do do not like um, forced regens. They don't like them whatsoever. Uh, Saferas, Insignias, Astras, and these mockers, um, they are a high fire risk if you do a forced regen. And not only that, like this guy's learned, he's now had to go and buy a replacement DPF. Um, so. It just proves that it's much safer to do my method of flushing them out. So, I've got my diagnostic machine here. We'll get inside and have a look. Okay, we'll get that plugged in. We'll just put that up there. Okay, so when he starts the vehicle up, he's getting a service vehicle now message. Um, it doesn't come every single time, but most mornings it, it comes. Okay, I'm using a launch Eurotem 3 scan tool here. Uh, it's a 1.7. Stop start. Has it got stop start? Yes, eco button. Yeah. Press. Come on in. That one. Uh, all wheel drive. Water pump with clutch. I'm gonna say yeah, and it's a manual. Read the fault code. Cylinder 1 glow plug, cylinder 3 glow plug, and an engine oil life exceeded. Okay, we'll turn the engine off there. Okay, now, this being a Vauxhall, the question is, what type of glow plug has he got? Now, has he got this pressure sensing glow plug, which are about £150 each, or maybe £100, 100 not pound each, wherever you pick choose to buy them or these ones which work out maybe sort of round about the 20 pound mark now you can have those or you can have those hopefully he's got the cheaper ones engine cover out of the way let's come down the back and have a look so you got one two sometimes you have just a single pressure sensor glow plug but these ones look like they are all just standard glow plugs so it's good news for him less money now that uh, seems suspiciously too easy for me um to say that's the reason why he's he's dpf is blocked of course your glow plugs not working is going to block your dpf engine oil life exceeded this will also stop your dpf from regening because once the car thinks that the oil is no longer fit for purpose it's not going to try and force a regen um, or try and do its own regen um, because it doesn't want to harm the engine so it will stop doing that now not every vehicle is like that I will say but most vehicles are like it so I'm just going to assume this one is going to do that uh, let's go let's go back out of here um, and just have a little look through live data just to make sure I'm not missing anything oh we've cleared the codes Oh, didn't mean to do that okay I'm just going to sort of have a look at a few different items on the live data okay we've got a few items ticked up that i want to have a look at uh differential pressure is that zero of course the engine's off switch that to something i'm more familiar with um okay let's start the vehicle up 
you can see it's already up to temperature it's just literally been switched off the customers just arrived so we'll start it back up see where we are oh noisy clutch on it so it says the regen is required but the pressure is zero let's hold the revs up So we've got around about 40, so the DPF is okay. I'm not sure why it's saying it needs a regen. Temperature sensors are working. Engine cooling temperature seems okay. And of course, over here, like we've learned from one of my other videos, the exterior temperature is working. So we'll just run the vehicle for a just a minute just to make sure that our engine coolant temperature is rising up. It is, yeah. Okay, now, I mean, there is more stuff than that you, that you can check for the, the GPF, but, you know, there's no other fault codes. If it was like a MAF sensor or anything like that, air leaks, boost leaks, everything else seems to be in order. So I think we found the issue. It's just a set of glow plugs. I'm not sure why the mechanic who... who you know, was doing the, the regen in the, in the beginning, couldn't just put a set of glow plugs in there. I um, really don't understand that. Um, and, all right, another lesson I'd like to say here now, while, I, yeah, while I'm at that point, is that forced regen he done, even if it worked, it was an absolute waste of time because he didn't fix the problem that caused the DPF to block in the first place. So before you do that, fix your glow plugs, fix your oil issue, and then sort out your DPF, preferably not a regen, um, a flush clean if you can. Okay, pick these up just down the road from Bennett's, part number there from, from Femi Bilstein. We'll get these fitted onto the car. Okay, I've got a little airline here, I've got the vehicle here. What we are going to do is just blow some air along here just to get any dust out from each bit. When we take the glow plugs out, we don't want any dust falling down into the cylinders there. Okay, got a few glow plug tools here that we can use if we need them. Reamer set and a little glow plug removal socket set. Now this is, don't even remember the brand of this, it's just a cheap kind of set. I'm pretty sure I can't really remember what it is. I would prefer, I would prefer the laser brand of these tools if, if, I, if I could have them, but these are the ones I've got. Okay, so I'm just using a pliers here just to grab the plug of the power supply plug for the glow plugs just to pull them out like that. Okay, now I've got four of those plugs out. I'm going to use some of this Power Lube Plus from launch. Spray them down over the glow plugs just so it gives them a bit of a soak and I'm Make, make it a little bit easier to get them out, less risk of them snapping, so they're not coming out dry. So let's open one of these and see what size socket we need to fit it. So that is the 10mm, we'll get that into the old glow plugs now and get them removed. Alright, let's get down here, onto that, sit that down nice tight and I'm just using a quarter inch ratchet here and yeah, look at that that was nice and easy no struggling whatsoever now we've let that power lube we've let that sit in for only a couple of minutes around about five minutes let's pull that out and you can see there, look down the threads of that. You can see where the lube has made its way down the thread. So it's done done a nice job there, that little bit of lube. You can see there where the tip of that glow plug wasn't burning properly. 
And that is number two. Oh, it hasn't come out. No, it's not catching. Put our pliers there. Let's have a look at that one. Nice little burnt tip again on it. And let that screen focus. No, it doesn't want to focus, does it? But yeah, we can see there that the fluid again has made its way down the thread. So that is number two. Okay, we've got number three out. That one there looks badly burned. Nice and luby there again, as we can see. And again, number three. Okay, and that's number four. So we've got the glow plug ream right here, and we can see there that it's nice and free it's spinning. It doesn't really need doing, there's not, not much carbon in there. So you don't really need to use that if you've got a glow plug that was very difficult to get out and it's sort of seized in with carbon, um, just to clean out any of the carbon from the port. So we'll get these new glow plugs in, that's number one. Number two. Number three and number four. Now you get these tightened down. They should be tightened down around to about 10 newton meters, but basically it's just a little nip. So as soon as that you feel it stop, tiny little nip, the way I like to do it. I prefer just feeling these with my hands rather than using a torque wrench. Um, but the general area is around about 10 newton meters. Okay, now that we've got all of the glow plugs in, you can see we've got a little bit of oil down around the area there. Um, but we've also got some up around here. Now, he does um, have to top this up, he, he said, every now and then of oil, and he does spill it. So I'm just going to take it that that oil has been spilled from here. As you can see, it's run its way down. But that's not what I'm here for anyway. Um, I can obviously tell him that there's oil there. Okay, so now that all the glow plugs are in, just down the back over here, we have the oil filter. So we'll, we're not going to video that. We'll get the oil changed and we'll get back. Okay, so I've just confirmed it with the customer. Multiple regions were done, yeah. No oil change was done, again. Please take that as advice. If you do a regen, if you do one, I don't advise you to do one, but if you do do one, please change your engine oil. Okay, so the oil's done, the glow plugs are in. I'm going to do an oil life reset here on the scan tool. Now, I did have the ignition off, so hopefully we don't have connect connectivity issues. Turn the ignition off. Okay, have to wait. Okay, that's done. Okay, now we've got the vehicle running. Just having a little look through live data, make sure everything looks normal. Um, DPF pressure looks a little bit low at idle, but you know, so I know some of these sensors are they're not that sensitive at when stuff's at idle. So you can see it only goes up in sort of increments of 10 there. So it's zero, it increase it a little bit, it goes to 10. And then if we, all right, let's increase it a little bit. 10, and then it goes to 20. So it doesn't read sort of one, two, three, four, five, six. So we could have sort of five millibars of pressure but it's not reading it um, just gonna take it for a little test drive okay so that's all done uh, we'll just go back and see if there's any fault codes no DTC's there so it's all a job done I think so that's it it's all finished okay, see you in the next video